Hey guys, let's look at one more uh, variation on these radicals and the denominators. If you remember, let's go back and do this. We're going to simplify something like this. And recall that what we used something in the uh, denominator called the conjugate, which is exactly the same thing as what's already there, except for the middle, the sign in the middle is changed. Okay, so we do the same to the top and the bottom as we have done since probably like fifth grade or whatever you learned to mess with fractions. Okay, so the top turns pretty easy. That's just going to be the same thing as times one. The bottom, if you remember, you don't have to do everything and have four terms. You can just multiply the first by the first and then the second of that one by the last there. So two times two is four. The negative times a positive will be a negative. 3 times 3 is 9, and then the square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2, okay? So we have 4 minus 9 times 2, which is going to be the same thing as 4 minus 18 or negative 14, right? So here is our answer, 2 plus 3 square root of 2 over negative 14. And do recall this, anytime you have a fraction, and let's say you, didn't, you got this as your answer, but the book has something different. Well, if the book has not 2 but negative 2, not 3 square root of 2 but negative 3 square root of 2, and not negative 14 but 14, we're completely fine. As long as every term in that fraction has the opposite sign, completely fine to call that a correct answer, because it is. All right, let's move on slightly. Okay, look at this. Take a second here and pause it if you need to and copy this one down. All right, now we have all kinds of jazz up top here. All right, we're going to follow the same pattern here. We're going to use the conjugates, okay? All right, and the conjugate this time is 2 plus 3 square root of 3, which we'll do in top and bottom again. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and need to do all, you know, the whole numerator back and forth. So let's do 4 first. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 square root of 3 is going to be 12 square root of 3. Done. 3 square root of 2 is there. And then 3 times a, three, a three, a, excuse me, square root of 3 times 3 times square root of 3 is the same thing as 3 times 3, which is 9. There we go. All right. And let's do the bottom. Again, don't forget, you can just do these two. That's going to be a 4. And then we'll have the last two, which will be this times this, which will give us 9 times 3 here. All right? Let's combine the top here. We have 8 plus 9 is 17. We have 12 square root of 3. And we have 3 square root of 2. The bottom, 4 minus 9 times 3 will be 4 minus 27, which is negative 23. And there we go. We're okay. The whole point of this is to rationalize the denominator. That is, to turn this denominator into a rational number, which means it can be expressed as a fraction. Square roots like this that don't have an integer as an answer are not rational numbers. You can't express them as a fraction. This is, of course, it's negative 23 over 1 if you want to write it that way. All right, let's try another one. Copy this one down, see how you do. And if you want, you can go ahead and give it a whirl. You can pause it and see how you do. All right, I'll go ahead and do this, assuming you've paused and unpaused. Oops, that should be a minus, that's my bad. Okay. So that'll be four minus three square root of two. Okay. All right, well, we'll need to go ahead and do the four all the way across. Four times four, 16. 4 times negative 3 would be negative 12 square root of 2. Done. Negative square root of 2 times 4 is going to be negative 4 square root of 2. And negative times a negative is a positive. That's happy. So we have a 3 there, and we have a times the square root of 4, which is 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. All right, bottom. 16 is all we need to do, 4 times 4. The second one is going to be a minus because it's you know, the last times a lot. So 3 times 3 is 9, and then times the square root of no, just 2. The square root of 4 is 2. Okay, let's look at the numerator. I have a 16, and I have a 6. That gives me 22. I have negative 12 and negative 4 of square root of 2, so that's negative 16 square root of 2. And then I have 16 minus 18, which is negative 2. 
Again, look at this entire fraction. This term, that term, and this term are all divisible by 2. Or if you want to say negative 2. We'll just call it 2 for this time. All right? So we can say this. We can go divide it by 2. We get 11. We get minus 8. Square root of 2. And we get divided by 2 will be negative 1. Okay? And this is pretty simple to go ahead and if you're dividing both of those terms by negative 1, that's an easy way to do it. It's not, not like it's 13 or something crazy that won't work. All right, 11 divided by negative 1 will be negative 11. And negative, whatever this is, you know, that would be positive because we just copy it down with the opposite sign. So there's your final answer. That actually doesn't have a denominator, so good for us. Okay, all right. That's pretty much the gist of it. All right, we'll try one more. This has square roots in all four terms. But again, once you... Once something works, I mean, often in, in, in math, you just reuse it. So if you want to, go ahead and pause it. Go ahead and multiply by the conjugate and top and bottom and come back together in a second. Okay, here is the top. Now this gets kind of funky here. 3 times 3 will be 9. Now I'm just going to do all these steps this time. 12 times 3, 36. Okay. And then, uh, now we're going to keep going with this one. So 3 times 2 will be 6. And then 12 times 2, square root of 24. Okay, done here. A negative times a positive will be a negative. Negative 6 times the square root of 9. We know that one, so we're okay on that. So negative again. And that'll be 4 times the square root of 6. Okay. All right. And let's take a look at the uh, denominator. Just this times this. So that'll be 9 times 3. And then just this times that. So that'll be minus 4 times 2. Let's go ahead and finish up the denominator. We got 27 here minus 8. That'll just give us 19. That's going to be 27 minus 8, 19. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. There's a little more work to be done. You notice that's the square root of 36 is 6, so we can say 9 times 6, or 54. All right, the square root of 24 divides into 4 times 6, right? So the square root of 4 comes out, gets multiplied by 6, which gives us 12 times the square root of 6, which is the only thing left now. We all know that negative 6 times the square root of 9 is the same thing as negative 6 times 3, which is negative 18. And negative 4 times the square root of 6 doesn't do, there's not a whole lot there. Okay, so here we go. All right. Well, we got 54 minus 18. That gives us 36. We've got plus 12 square root of 6 minus 4 square root of 6, which is 8 square root of 6. And that's as far as we can go. As long as that denominator is rationalized, we're in good shape. Okay. All righty. Let's try the practice set A and B. And uh, pause it and we'll try A first. You might wonder why I didn't do 2 times the square root of 3 on the top and bottom. You can, but really you're not trying to... 2 is okay as a rational number. The only thing you need to do is just the square root of 3 because that's the irrational number you want to clean up. So either way, you would have gotten an answer if you did it correctly. And then after you you know reduced the fraction, we would have got the same answer. Okay. So we got 5 square root of 3 plus square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. Bottom is going to be 2 times 3, right? Okay, so we have 5 square root of 3 plus 3 over 6. There we go. You can check. Does 5, 3, and 6, they all have this in the common uh, factor you can factor out? No. So that's as far as we can go. All right, pause it and try and beat. Okay, again, this is one of those longer ones here, so, man, let's do the, uh, you know what, let's do the more complicated one first. 
Okay, so let's see here. Let me make sure. All right. Well, first off, 2 times 2 is, we'll, we'll do this one first. 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 12, <coughs> excuse me, times the square root of 3 is the square root of 36, right? Well, the square root of 36 is just 6. All right. So now we're going to do this times the last one here. So 2 times 3 is 6. The square root of 12 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 24. And we're done with this. Okay. Then we have a negative times a positive. That'll be negative uh, 6 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. I'll just put that there. And we have a negative times a positive again. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. The square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. Okay. Let's just keep going with the numerator. All right. This is going to be 24 plus, and let's go ahead and do this. 24 turns into 4 times 6. The 4 comes out. The square root of 4 is 2. So we have 12 here times the square root of 6 left. Minus 18, 6 times 3, minus 9, square root of 6. Okay, so we see some, we can get these together. 24 minus 18 is 6. 12 of something minus 9 of something is 3 of something. There you go. Now let's wait on figuring out the denominator. Okay, here's our denominator. And again, don't forget, you can just mess with the first two and the last two. I mean, the first and the third and the second, or second and the fourth. So let's look at the first two square root of three times two square root of three, which will give you four times three. All right, the last will be a negative. The three times the three is a nine. The two, square root of two times square root of two will be just a two. Four times three is 12 minus 18. We know that's negative six, okay? So here's a negative six at the bottom. All right, here's where it gets interesting. If you have this as your answer, that is technically correct, but that's not the way the book's going to have. They're going to look at this term, this term, and this term, and go, ah, all of those are divisible by 3. We're going to reduce this fraction. So, if you divide each of those terms by 3, you get 2, you get 1, which you don't have to write if you don't want to, and you get negative 2. And again, you might, in your book, have the, you know, the opposite of every single term. You might have negative 2 minus square root of 6 over 2. Either one of these answers, this one or that, is totally fine. So, all right. Okay, have a good time. See you next time.